Good morning, I'm your host, Max Zeng. Our mission is to ensure the prosperity of humanity by enabling everyone to be happy and successful. Today, we'll be learning from Nikki Bird. Welcome, how are you? Hi, Max, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's good to have you here. Tell us, what do you do? Thank you. I, my name is Nikki Bird. As you have mentioned, I am an author and uh, a speaker. I also create content, online digital content. And um, I am very passionate about human potential, you know, impacting people and all that. That's basically what I do. And that's awesome. That's uh, what I do as well uh, in terms of in the general <laughs> area. So I want to bring out the success of human potential to the fullest in every single one. Uh, because like, you know, right now, a lot of people know that a lot of people that it's possible to accomplish a lot, but then many people don't know how to achieve that. So that's why I have this podcast to unlock the secrets from successful people like you. So how did you go about becoming successful in terms of writing the book? Well, actually, let's talk about what's the book about first. <laughs> uh, well, maybe we should first talk about how did I get there to writing a book. <laughs> I think it would be an interesting conversation as well. Um, I, like you mentioned, one of the things that um, pulled pull me to your podcast and to connecting with you on LinkedIn was, you know, about human pros prosperity and things like that. So when I saw that, I was like, wow. Uh, Max seems to be doing, you know, something that I am also very passionate about. And so that is why, that is how we connected. And so in relation to how I came to write about my book, in 2016, I was uh, let off from a job I literally held to for dear life. I did not see the layoff coming. I, I thought I had time uh, in that particular organization. I had plans. Uh, even my boss had spoken to me about plans like five years ahead. So I was not never so worried or thinking about being let off at all. But one day I went to work and my boss called me. I just thought we were having a normal meeting as usual. But that day was nothing normal. There was nothing normal about that meeting. There was nothing normal about that day. And at the end of that meeting, I was, there was no job. I was jobless. You know, I was told there's some restructuring going on and we decided to let you go. Uh, we've been discussing this for months. We didn't just know how to tell you, but there's no better way than to just say, you know what, you're going. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was... Life, life shifted for me completely back then in 2016. And when I left work that day, I knew my life was never going to be the same again. And one of the things that I kept, well, when I left work, I don't even think I was thinking anything else other than just being angry. Like, why, why me? You know, I, I had a couple of people in my mind I thought deserved being let off, not me. I was like, I, th I think that old guy should be changed, not me. I think that old man, you know, that old woman. And I just thought I was too young for this, you know. I kind of was feeling very entitled, but that was just the pain talking. And so weeks went by and I was just in deep pain, you know. I would cry myself to sleep. As a single mom, I was like, if there was anyone who shouldn't lose their job, it should be me, you know. And it turned out to be like, when you, when you buy a car, and suddenly you start seeing that particular car everywhere when you drive. And prior to buying that car, you didn't quite notice that particular mic, right? So for me, when I got retrenched, every time I turn on the radio or put on the TV, I will hear news about retrenchment. That was something I was never paying attention to, but it just every time was jumping on my face. And so at the back of my mind, as much as I was you know, hurting and feeling so disappointed and feeling so down, I started asking the question, but what is driving retrenchment? Why are so many people being let off? Why are so many people losing their jobs? What could be behind this? And so my pain slowly started moving into curiosity. And at one point, I just wanted to satisfy my curiosity. Like, I'm just going to do some research about this to find out what is driving ret the retrenchment, what is driving so many people being let off in South Africa at the time. You know, we're now speaking in 2020, you know, let off has become, you know, like because of COVID-19, a lot of so many people have already lost their jobs. So 
I went on the internet uh, and I started researching just to understand what usually are the dynamics that will cost a company to lay off, say, for example, 2,000 employees in the space of less than two years or three years, and this company is still standing. In my mind, I thought, aren't people supposed to be like the lifeline of any organization? How can so many people leave a particular organization and they are still standing. I am sure something is replacing these people. Something has to be holding the position and doing the job they did. And so prior to being retrenched, I have no interest in technology. The only technology that I know or what to do with was maybe work on my laptop at work uh, or use my phone for calling and texting. That was the only technology I knew at the time. So when I got into researching what was what could be driving retrenchment. One of the things that stood out for me was that technology is fast replacing humans at work. That was something I was never paying attention to. I, I had no clue what was going on prior to being retrenched. But when that came out for me, it became like such a passion for me to, to bring that awareness to a lot of people that you know what, technology is changing work at a rate that we've never seen before. Uh, for the first time, words like artificial intelligence you know robotics and things like that it jumped in front of me i didn't even know what they were it literally sounded like chinese language to me <laughs> but the more clueless i was the more curious i wanted to know what these words were and what they meant and what they signified and what they had to do with people losing their jobs so I just throw myself, you know, and I learn as much as I could about, you know, tech and emerging technologies, artificial intelligence, of course, the, the, the theory part of it, nothing technical at all. <laughs> but then I started writing about it on social media. And when I would put like my findings or what I was, you know, realizing on, on social media, I realized that a lot of people were just as clueless as I was. And so social media became like a feedback on what you know needed to be done. I realized so many people want to understand this as much as I want to understand. And so it evolved from just writing, you know, posts on Facebook or, or Instagram to blogging. So I started a blog, I started on my website and I was now writing articles about it. So it evolved from there into a book. I, I used to tell people that most of my friends are surprised that I wrote a book. If there's anyone who is surprised I wrote a book, it's me. Like, I am so surprised that I wrote a book. When I started out, it wasn't like I'm going to write a book. I was just satisfying my curiosity just to understand life and the world and make sense of why I lost my job and make sense of why other people are losing their jobs. And so that particular secure, uh, um, uh, sorry, that particular curiosity led me to where I am today. So it eventually became a book. And I thought, what better title than to let people know you either disrupt yourself or you will get disrupted. So which brings me now to the title of my book is Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted. Because in my case, I was very comfortable in my job. I thought I had a secure position. I, had a, I thought my job was secure. I'd signed a permanent employment contract, so to say. And so I wasn't worried. And so when I put a book together, I was like, disrupt yourself or you will be disrupted because there is no neutral ground, you know? And the idea of you disrupting yourself is for you to start asking yourself, you see where, where the world is going? You start asking yourself, is what I am doing still going to be relevant in the next three, four to five years? Is this position I'm in today, will the company still even retain this particular position, you know, in the next three, three years or so? The certificate, maybe if you're a student, you start asking yourself, the certificate I'm currently pursuing in, in school or college or whatever, is it even going to be relevant by the time I graduate, you know? And all of this. So these are the questions I wanted people to start being curious about and asking themselves the hard questions. They are uncomfortable questions. But when you ask these questions and you disrupt your own self, then you will escape being disrupted, you know? So those are the ideas that I've shared in the book. And that is really my journey on how I came about writing the book. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I love the title, you know, uh, it's a disrupting yourself or to be disrupted. So, and, and that is very true. I mean, like, you know, and uh, nowadays, like with so many things, different things, uh, as you mentioned, uh, with the technology, you know, it's just eating the world. Uh, and Absolutely. a lot of jobs are going away. So it's really important that you kind of, that everyone start staying uh, up to trend in terms of learning skills necessary to become successful in the future. And that, uh, you know, they, that's something they need to put the effort in. 
uh, starting by reading your book, you know, and that would be one. And so, so what, the, so it seems like uh, introspection is like one part of it. It's like, you just kind of start thinking about, hey, you know, what other things that I can start doing? So what, are there other recommendations in terms of once you introspect what you need to do, like what a recommendation, how you can go about disrupting yourself? Yeah, some some of the ideas that I've shared is, you know, the that the, the era in which the norm was that go to school, get a certificate and get a job, that era is over. That was true in the days of my parents, I suppose, you know, but it is no longer the truth now. And if we continue pushing that narrative that you go to school, you get a certificate, you get a job. I think that we are setting the next generation for failure. And so one of the things that I recommend is that people should start thinking outside the box, think outside the norm, think outside the whole idea of that. If you go to school, the only thing you are supposed to do is to get a job. I think that as much as technology is destroying jobs, technology has also provided so many opportunities. Hence, you and I can do what we do now without necessarily holding on to a job. Well, I don't know if you have a job, but I don't. <laughs> and somehow I'm still surviving. You know, you can still be able to run your podcast online. You can be able to start some sort of an online uh, uh, business or, or anything you're passionate about and be able to do that digitally, you know, and from the comfort of your own home. And I think those are some of the opportunities that, that, uh, technology provides. So for so many people, when they hear of how technology is, is destroying jobs, they get very frightened. But there is, there is, um, there is of course, it, 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 their, their fear is valid. But the truth is that there are also opportunities which many are failing to see that, you know what, I can still do so much using the power of the internet, I can still do so much, you know, be able to empower myself, educate myself. Look, for example, like me, I am now in the field of, you know, where I can talk about technology, talk about emerging technologies and their impact on work, their impact on the world. That is not something that I studied in school. There is no certificate I have to back that. But I, I, I empowered myself. I learned that on my own. And so if I could do that, then the question you need to ask yourself is that what, what, can I, depending on what you are passionate about, what can I go on the internet and, and empower myself about, you know, for some people you may need to take a short course, a short course on, on that particular subject you're passionate about. You might need to learn it completely for free on YouTube or using tutorials, YouTube tutorials. There is so much information out there and so much knowledge out there that I think um, people should not just be afraid about losing their jobs, but they should rather be looking at how can I empower myself you know and depending on what industry they are in what 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 their passions are about every particular thing that anyone is passionate about they can find a way to enhance that you know on the internet so those are some of the opportunities that technology does bring and for me that is, those are my recommendations go online and find a way to empower yourself um, yeah, hundred percent. That's uh, powerful in terms of empowering yourself. That is the key to really to be successful in anything you do. So, and then once you have that, you don't have to worry about a job. You can create and make your own job. So, yeah. So you kind of. And yeah, I've recently been reading as I said, a book to myself uh, that's kind of relevant to this. So I've been kind of reading about one of them is called Grit, which is the power of uh, passion and perseverance. So to, in terms of long-term success from, uh, from throughout your lifetime, as long as you have grit, you will be successful no matter what, because you know, Absolutely. And, and because you just really about, you know, just being passionate about the things you do, keep learning and keep on doing it, never giving up. You know, most people give up. That's why they fail. <laughs> because they give up and Absolutely. they don't try. And the second book I kind of recently read, reading is uh, called Growth. So it's uh, having a growth mindset. And, you know, the idea is that, you know, it's that we, a lot of people keep thinking about, I cannot do this, I'm not good enough. Or, you know, or thinking about the results. Or, you know, I want, a comp I want to become, you know, a, a, become a lawyer versus like, I want to become, I uh, just want to be helping people with the, with the, um, with my skill in, in the law. So, so it's like focus too much on the results versus the progress, you know, the effort towards results. And, 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 and that kind of limits themselves, you know. Um, and then another book I can really read is uh, The Peak, which is talking about like the performance of a human. Like, you know, uh, anyone can actually become an expert, a genius, you know, uh, if they actually have the right training. Uh, which book talked about deliberate training. 
a deliberate practice. So it's very powerful. So, and that's something, some of this information, a lot of people don't quite know. And, and, and it's really important that everyone gets that message, you know, grit, growth mindset, plus, you know, the possibilities that anyone can become an expert in anything they want if they have Absolutely. grit to do it, so. Absolutely, and the desire as well, like I mentioned, prior to me being retrained, uh, prior to me being laid off from, from my job, I had no interest in tech. I had no interest in empowering myself. All I knew was that I had a job. And you've just mentioned something very crucial, you know, about uh, people at the end of the day, focusing more on the results than on the process. The process is where the empowerment lies. It is where, it is where you are able to build yourself up. And how does it happen? Through reading, like you've mentioned, how many people read these days, you know, and how many people go on the internet to empower themselves. You see, especially with the young generation, they go on the internet to watch music, like go on YouTube, see the views on a music clip, then compare to your view, to views on a clip like, let's say financial intelligence then you will know that we still have a long way to go when it comes to empowering ourselves. So entertainment seems to be what you know, many young people are after because they have this an illusion that when I finish college, you know, the government is gonna take care of me with some jobs and whatever, but that is just not true. So you have to become curious and you have to start asking the hard questions I mentioned earlier on, you know, where's my life going? How is this gonna end? You know two years from now, three years from now, how is it going to end? Reach out, find out books, find out courses online, you know, uh, uh, watch content online, YouTube content that will empower you, not just make you feel good about yourself and dance and all of that. Of course, having fun is good. It's good to have fun, but you have to remember at the end of the day, you need to pay bills, you, know, you, you need to feed yourself, you need to you know, take care of what needs to be taken care of and how do you do that if you don't have the means? So it is very, uh, self-improvement is very important and focusing on the process rather than just the result is the key because there is focusing on the result. I think it's the mindset of, 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 of an employee because you know at the end of the month, you're going to have so-and-so salary or at the end of the week, you, you're supposed to get this paid, this amount of money. But when you are on your own and you're doing your own thing, you cannot have that result oriented mindset, just purely focused on that. Like this week, I'm going to have this or next month, or next month, I'm going to have this. You focus on the process because if you don't focus on the process, growth is not going to happen. You may eventually get the results of the money and all of that. But if you don't focus on the process, I don't think growth can really happen. So the, that is just one I wanted to add on, on what you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like one, if you actually simply focus on the results, you definitely can get there sometime. Um, or go, go. Yeah. However, at the same time, it's not where your potential is. Your potential is actually so, so much more. Uh, if you focus more on the progress and focus on yourself and not on the, the external expectations, you know, if you have just focus on yourself in terms of what your passion is, why you do the things you do. Like, yeah. why are you doing yeah. any of this? Why do you go to go to yeah. work? You know, why do you spend 40 hours a week at a job if you don't like it or something like that? So uh, those are things that uh, I think a lot of people start asking nowadays. Yeah, yeah. and I believe that. when it comes to, when it comes to human prosperity and uh, human potential that you and I will talk about, um, for someone to be impacted by what you do, you have to focus on that process, on that progress. Because if the focus is money, few people really get impacted or inspired by just money, someone has money. It's about the person who has that money. So if at any point in your journey, if you want to really inspire people, you have to focus on that process and that growth and that you know, progress you are making. If it's all about money, at the end of the day, you see that people who have just money, they end up intimidating people. You know, if, People have so much money without character and growth. Nobody's inspired by that, but a lot of people will get intimidated by, oh, wow, okay, that's just money. But then the human aspect of it, which you know is the title of your podcast, I'm very much passionate about human potential as well. For me to be able to inspire someone, I need to focus on that growth. I have not attained the kind of success that I think anyone would like, oh, Nikki has this money. No, I don't. But the thing is that people are able to recognize me because of my journey and because I have focused so much on that growth and that process, not about the outcome of the money because I don't have the money yet. I will have it at some point, I know that. But because 
I can be able to impact people now based on that process and that progress that and that growth that I'm purely focused on now. And somehow I am able to inspire people based on that. So that is a very important point that focusing on the process and the progress and the growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's definitely a slow start. So uh, for me, I like uh, for my sh show or for my business right now, the, the money is not there yet. Uh, but I'm focused on the right things in terms of learning, growing myself. Uh, and, and yeah, it's going to be a slow start. You know, it'll take a little bit of time because it's a good, it takes time to invest in yourself. That's the thing that you have to invest in yourself. But at the end, over a lifetime, that's where I will, where I win, where I will be successful. Uh, so Absolutely. And yeah, in terms of the views that definitely, like I have a website called path to genius.app. So this is where a website where it has all my knowledge, everything I know on there, you know, uh, to empower people to become a genius in anything they want. Uh, however, the, you know, the view is not right there. <laughs> Very few people go there. Uh, I try to get people to get there to, to use it, uh, but it's not. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, and of course, on the other hand, you know, a, a cat video or some kind of dance move on a TikTok or anything like that, that gets millions of views. <laughs> exactly, um, my point, um, that's what I was saying. Yeah, um, but yeah, with time, I mean, like, you know, I, th and I think with the changes that's happening with the world and where things, with, with people losing jobs and things like that, I think when people will start, slowly start to realize, hey, we need to spend more time on investing on ourselves and growing ourselves and educating ourselves so that we can reach our full potential in anything we do um, versus simply just you know watching things for fun. Uh, definitely fun is all important as you mentioned. So um, for me, like everything I do nowadays, I'm thinking of using three, depend, depending on three principles. It's like I want to be supportive, I want to be demanding, and I want to be fun as well. So anything oh, yeah. I do in terms of how I teach people, how I treat myself and how I do things. So those are the three achievements I'm thinking about. Uh, so yeah, you kind of mentioned that, you know, um, so yeah, definitely money is important and because you're, at the end of the day, you do need to pay the bills. So you mentioned you don't have a job yet. So, and so how are you, so how are you uh, surviving right now? Um, when the decision, actually after, you know, after I, I lost my job, one of the conscious decision, decisions I made was that I was never going to go back to corporate world again. I think part of that decision was because of the pain I felt losing my job. I'm like, I don't think I want to feel this pain ever again. But secondly, because I kind of felt that there was more in me that I could offer to the world than just sitting behind a desk. You know, this is not for everyone, of course. There are some people that they are, they are calling and their purpose is tied, you know, to, to working for particular organizations and thing like, things like that. But for me, I personally feel like I think I had more to offer, you know, and I'm going to try to find out how I can offer this and, you know, and all of that. But, you know, stepping out on your own, it's not the easiest thing to do. Yeah, believe you me, because I have... I have seen struggle that I didn't think it was possible. As much as I'm passionate about what I do, there were times where, of course, bills needs to be paid, life still goes on, you know, and things and all of that. And there was literally no money. And there was a time I felt tempted, like going back to the corporate world, maybe I should find a job or something like that. But I was like, no. So when the idea now officially came for me to write the book, I decided, okay, I am not going to get a job, but I am going to learn other uh, handcraft things I could do from home, sell online, uh, take care of the bills, put food on the table while writing the book. So I just literally went online and I literally learned how to, 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 to do the handcraft that it is something that is very much done in Africa. They're like beaded work. I don't have a sample next to me. I would have just shown you because it's hard to explain, but it's like jewelry, but it's, it's very much African stuff. So I used to do that. I used to uh, uh, craft and design that stuff. And I would sell them online. I would sell them on my Facebook page. I was, uh, I wasn't selling much, you know, within a month and things like that, but it took care of the bills you know, the, the food and stuff during the process of writing the book. 
when the time to publish the book came, I tried to get sponsorship, which was very, very, very challenging. I knocked on so many corporate doors and tried to get sponsorship for the book, but it didn't really quite work out. I tried crowdfunding to sponsor the book, uh, but it didn't see quite work out. But eventually an individual, you know, took over and one thing led to another and, and, and someone, you know, within the corporate world uh, believed in my work so much and they said, you know what, this is beautiful. And, I as an individual, not as my organization, but individual as I'm, I am going to, to, to make sure that this book gets you know, to the market and that is how sponsorship came for my book. So prior to that, I was just doing crafting work and there were, as a writer as well, there were times I did write articles for other um, uh, media platforms to, to get paid and yeah, just to take care of the bills, you know. So but when the book came out and got into the market, it was on Amazon. Then from there, like income started coming in from the book, sales of the book and, and things. And then I started getting invitations for speaking, speaking engagements as well. So that was another source of income. Now with COVID-19, that is a different story because there are no conferences happening, you know. And so that, that has kind of also shifted on my part. But then one of the things I wanted to to improve on myself was I told myself, okay, you know, conferences are not happening. And a big part of my income was coming from that, you know, um, uh, part, but what, what more can I do? Because now I realize this journey of disruption is constant. It's not like you disrupt yourself once and you sit and you think you're done. No, with what COVID-19 is doing, everyone constantly have to you know ask the hard questions and disrupt themselves so i realized that i needed to do more work you know to have some sort of income coming digitally and so i i i converted my website to uh, an e-commerce platform where i could sell the books via my own website as well that was something i wasn't doing prior to COVID 19 and also put some other um, uh, some other just things living like t-shirts, you know, to sell for my website. And yeah, so it, it's been a journey. So in terms of income and things like that, yes. And I also started creating content on YouTube, which I'm so excited about. It's been a learning journey for me as well. So you constantly have to find ways to keep the dream alive and keep the body alive as well, you know, just to keep the two together, you know, and finding a ways to make income, even if it's not on what you, the main thing you had planned, like for me was books and speaking and all of that. I needed to find different ways to make more income. Uh, sometimes I do research for organizations and I get, you know, income comes from that. So it's a constant way of looking for more opportunities outside what your mind had carved out as this is my source of income constantly having to look for more opportunities outside to grow yourself, to grow your income and things like that. Yeah, but we, we're looking forward to more growth because currently I am also working on the second book. Hopefully this time next year. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying more than that. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it's uh, awesome to actually hear that story from the start to end. I mean, it also does yeah. the difficulty and at the same time, your success as well. So. And uh, yeah, and I second on that. In terms of becoming an entrepreneur, it's not easy. Uh, it's not for the faint it's heart. Not. So it's not. It's not for the faint heart. It's not. regular income, nice income, it's just stay in a, in a corporate job. That's actually uh, yeah. a way to make income. So yeah. entrepreneur is not for the income. It's actually for an <clears> idea. So it's for an idea for you. It's for the, to you know, empower people to disrupt themselves. That's the idea. And that you, are, you, I are, love it. you, you want to do that. For me, mm. it's about you know helping people to realize their full potential. So, and I'm doing that for that, and not for the money. And if you're doing it for money, go get a for a job. That's probably it's easier <laughs> for most people. Absolutely, um, I agree. And then, and then, yeah. In then, in terms of success and income, yeah, and you know, it's really important. Like, if you really want to be like successful in terms of having money, it's actually important to actually have multiple streams of income. So it sounds like you have kind of naturally developed that as part of your journey. So, and that is actually key to financial freedom. It's actually not just having one income because you have one income yes. job, wait, you lose your job, bam, you have lost all your income and now you are not in, in the good spot. So it's really important Absolutely. to, you know, have that one job along with any kind of some other things on the side so that you can actually give up multiple streams of income. So income from a day job, income from investment, income in terms of income from any side hustles or income yep. from books or any other things. You want to have multiple streams. And when you have multiple streams, you know, you have nothing to worry about. 
one thing goes down, absolutely. you still have other things. I agree. That's absolutely, down. absolutely. Like if it was just a job that I was holding on to and then the pandemic happened and I lost my job, I would have still hit the ground so hard, you know. But because throughout the past couple of years, I've learned to, to pick myself up every time. So even when the COVID happened and it impacted what I do and all of that, conferences, you know, with social distancing and all of that, most things were not happening. I just became more creative on how to still continue to survive, you know. So that's one of the advantages of stepping out on your own, of doing this entrepreneurship thing. You become creative on finding ways to survive. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I'm, you know, uh, coming up with different ways as well. I'm testing out different uh, ways I can offer my service so that can actually help people uh, doing, you know, still focus on the main things, but, you know, offering a variety of the kind of services. Cool. Um, so let's go into lighting around with questions uh, just to kind of get, get everything out of you. So how do you <laughs> stay happy every single day? No, no way. No, that days I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> I think that happiness is not the goal. I don't think my goal is to be like happy every day. I want to be happy most of the days, of course. I think I'm pretty much a happy person. But then you don't, you don't become a robot to the point where you don't feel, you know, when life throws all of these rocks at you and you just like you know what I, I don't feel anything you know no things happen and you get you down sometimes your your plan things don't go as you plan and it gets you down so I am not happy every day I think for the short answer I know I'm not happy every day <laughs> but I would I love it I wouldn't change anything about that yeah, I think it really depends on how you look at uh, happiness. So for me, it's really more of a skill where you can actually be, can become happy every day if you choose to. So it becomes a choice. Uh, mm -hmm. rather than, not necessarily, so you don't actually feel anything. You still feel it, but it's your choice on how you want to handle it so that you can become happy again as soon as possible. Uh, or you can yeah. stay that if you choose to. <laughs> uh, well, so, I, I think we, we're saying the same thing. Is When I say I'm not happy every day, I recognize that moment when I wasn't happy. I recognize that I recognize that moment where I had to cry over something I thought was going to come through and it didn't come through. So that moment, even if it lasted five minutes, wasn't a moment of happiness for me. So I could be happy from morning till about 12 and then maybe 12 to 3 p.m. is that moment. And then from 3 p.m. to the rest of the day till tomorrow, I'll be happy. So I usually like pick myself up every time. So I think it's pretty much the same thing. I, 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 don't, I don't mean to to like you you know what being sad and gloomy and all of that it's it's okay no but you recognize when it happens this happened this is how i felt but you know what life continues so for me that's my mindset mm -hmm. yep yep 100 and how do you stay productive um i think the idea of you know your why why are you doing this keeps you productive because if you miss out on why am I doing what I do, you probably will give up at some point. So the whole reason of my why, which is, you know, to empower people, to ignite human potential and help people to understand that you may lose, even if you lose your job, it's not the end of the world. That whole why drives me and it helps me to be able to, you know, keep doing what I do and to remain productive. And the one last question, what is one thing my listeners can do starting today to become successful? I think that you have to bet on yourself. If there's okay. one word I can say, I actually did a video about this a couple of days ago, it's on my YouTube channel. You bet on yourself. If there was ever a time in, in human history where people should bet on themselves, it is now because the economy is volatile, life is difficult, the pandemic is causing havoc across the world. So you cannot bet on governments anymore. You cannot bet on economic situations anymore. You have to bet on yourself. You, whatever you want to achieve out of life, you like, you know what, this is on me. It's no longer going to be on government. What if government doesn't come through for you? It's not gonna be longer be about your organization. What if they let you go, you know? So if you are listening to this, and you have been betting maybe on your family or you have dreams and you're planning 
you know, hoping maybe some investors will come on board and all of that, you know, start betting on yourself, start finding ways to bootstrap yourself and pick this dream up and whatever venture you are planning to do, pick it up one way or the other, it will move, it will go if you bet on yourself. When you get help along the way, that should be a blessing, an addition, but don't sit and wait for someone to come and save you. The savior may not come. So bet on yourself and start going. It is practically the same thing I've talk, spoken about in my book, Disrupt Yourself. Awesome. Thank you, Nikki, for sharing your life story and expertise to help others prosper. Thank you so much, Max, for having me.